Now let's talk about AWS Wavelength. So Wavelength zones are infrastructure deployments embedded within the telecommunications provider data centers at the edge of 5G networks. The idea is that whenever you see 5G in your questions, this is most likely going to be Wavelength. But let's go a little bit deeper in this. So the idea is that you're able to deploy some AWS services directly to the edge on the 5G networks. For example, you can deploy EC2 instances, EBS volumes, even VPC, to a wavelength to a wavelength zone. So say you have, a, for example, a telecom carrier has a 5G network and you're going to have a wavelength zone and through a carrier gateway, you're able to actually deploy an EC2 instance on that zone. But that zone belongs to the 5G network itself so that whenever a user on 5G for a mobile device accesses your wavelength zone, they have a really, really low latency because the application is really deployed at the edge. So this is the whole idea behind Wavelength, is to give ultra low latency to applications through 5G networks. The traffic, for example, in this case example, never leaves the communication service provider, the CSP network, it actually never reaches AWS. But in case you do need to have a secure connection to AWS, you can. So the Wavelength zone is connected to the parent region. In case, for example, your EC2 instances in your wavelength zone needs to access a database, for example, RDS or DynamoDB within your main parent AWS region. There is no additional charges or service agreements for using wavelength. And the use cases for this are multiple. This is to have smart cities, ML assisted diagnostics, connected vehicles, interactive live video streams, AR and VR, real-time gaming, anything that requires really low latency and to be very, very close at the edge to your users. And this is a use case enabled by 5G. So I hope you liked it, and I will see you in the next lecture.